Hi everyone, today I've got a pretty cool video for all of you. You'll notice that the setup is a little bit different now and that's because I've got a nice tripod. So instead of me basically looking down at the camera, you're actually almost eye level with me now and I've got a lot more space around here for me to uh, post stuff like pictures or videos while I'm talking. So I think this is going to be a better setup, but um, you guys let me know, okay? So today what we're going to be talking about is actually something I've got right over here. And it's this bad boy. This is the Nintendo 64. Uh, it's just the jungle green version. Nothing fancy about it. It's just a regular N64. But what you don't know is that inside this, it's actually be excuse me, it's actually been RGB modded so that it outputs well in RGB. Now, if you don't know what that is, you probably haven't been watching many videos on the channel for a long period of time. You see, RGB is the absolute best quality you can get prior to systems such as the Dreamcast, for example. See, the Dreamcast outputted in VGA, and then after that, the PlayStation 2 outputted in Component, and then we had HDMI, and so on and so forth. But for all the consoles before the Dreamcast, or at least the bulk of them, what you want to do is you want to get RGB out. And that is the purest source signal that you can get. And the problem with it is that in North America, we didn't have the necessary cable system for our television. We always had the RCA or the audio video jack out, which is the red, um, the white, and the yellow. Well, it's actually just yellow. The other two are for sound. So we didn't have what's called a SCART cable. Now, you can pick these up, if I can find where I put it. You guys can't see in the video, but I've got a lot of stuff hanging around here. Okay, so this cable right here is an RGB, well, no, excuse me, it's just a SCART cable, okay? Uh, you can pick these up from retro console accessories on eBay. Uh, they, they make the best cables for this sort of stuff. If you're into retro gaming and you don't know about retro console accessories, well, you're just missing out. Let's put it that way, okay? You you need to pay attention to these guys because the cabling, um, well, the cables that they offer are just absolutely superb. So let's get back to this. So I picked this up on eBay from, I wrote it down here so I wouldn't forget, Stefan Shook. And he, he does this all himself. He does RGB mods on N64 and he does RGB mods on the second Super Nintendo uh, revision that came out, that like slimline or mini Super Nintendo. So if you're looking for an RGB mod, uh, I can highly recommend them. The quality that is outputted here is fantastic. Now, I can't show you a before and after like I did with some of my old videos when I talk about RGB mods or just cables and things like that because today I use the XRGB Mini Framemeister. This is the absolute best upscaler on the market right now, in my opinion. This is the, the Mac Daddy L. This is just the best of the best. So if I were to put in the RCA jacks here, if I were to connect the N64 through that through here, you'll see a difference, but it's not going to be night and day because this bad boy is extremely, extremely powerful. However, that being said, the image is much more obvious on a television for whatever reason. When you're capturing footage, it's sometimes awkward to see, but you'll definitely see it on your TV. So I highly recommend you guys, if you're interested, go check out uh, Stefan Shook on eBay. I'm sure there's other people that you might know of that do quality uh, RGB mods. Uh, if you're curious about pricing, he has a... Uh, a best offer that you can make. Uh, what he also does is, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but he snaps out uh, on the inside of these the uh, region um, lock mechanism, which is basically a little piece of plastic. So he breaks those off so you can play video games from any region. Well, any region, I don't know about that. I don't know about PAL territories, but I do know that North American and European games work just fine. So you can play some classics like um, 
something I got right here, which you won't be able to see, but whatever. This is uh, Sin and Punishment from Japan. I was a huge importer back in the day. Um, so yeah, I can play like Sin and Punishment on here perfectly, and it will look a lot better than it does on the Wii's Virtual Console, because this is being outputted in RGB SCART, thanks to this lovely cable, and I'm going to upscale it to high definition, with my frame meister here so it will be superb the quality and i'm going to show you guys as i'm talking i'm sure you're seeing video footage and the video footage is going to be of stuff like um uh, what's it called uh mario 64 and i might we'll see what, what i have time for i've got games like jet force gemini i got a whole bunch of games i brought back um that i'm looking forward to checking out so we'll see. Um, now, like I said, this was around 100 bucks. Uh, I think I said. And so, but he, he's negotiable, so you can, uh, you know, you can go back and forth with him. I live in Canada, so obviously that always plays into it because the shipping is, is going to cost a little bit more. Uh, something else that he did for me was on the controller itself, and this I'm going to take pictures so you guys can see, the analog stick here has been modified. It's not the original N64 stick, this is my uh, Donkey Kong 64 uh, controller, it's brand new, I, I've never used this ever. And the analog stick here, it, it, the base of it goes down really, really thin, whereas this one is almost like the GameCube controller where the ball at the, um, at the base of the analog stick is really, really like wide, the diameter, it's got a huge diameter on it so that it won't fudge up as much as, <clears throat> excuse me, as, much as the original ones uh, do. Trying to find an N64 controller today is virtually impossible that still has a very tight analog stick, because they usually all just go the way of the dodo. So I paid <clears throat> in total for everything, I think it was like 130 which was a really good deal. I thought that was a, a really, really good deal. Uh, I also went out and I picked up uh, some of these which if you can't see, I'll just open one up quick, quick, show you. These are very, very useful. They are controller extension ports. So you put your N64 controller in there, and then you plug that one into the system, and it's a good, like, you know, six feet. And why would I do that? Well, to be really honest with you, today with big screen TVs, this sort of thing just is not going to cut it. I need an extra like six feet so I can relax on the sofa here and, um, and check the games out. So what's great about um, the cables from Retro Console Accessories is that because of this standard port here that all Nintendo consoles used, I think all the way up to and including the uh, GameCube, you can use this on the Super Nintendo, the, the original uh, model, this one. Let's grab it. On this bad boy right here, you can use this same cable on here. And if you do have this particular model, it doesn't actually need to be RGB modded. It has RGB out to begin with, so you're good to go. So if you have this and you mod your N64 for RGB out, well, this same one cable will actually work on both of these. And if you have an upscale, you don't need to have a frame meister like this. I do this, uh, the beauty of this is that for the videos that you guys see on my retro games, it's the absolute best possible quality that I can capture. And I mean, all the video that you're seeing here, look at the colors of like Mario 64, for example. You, you should notice how bright and vivid, how sharp everything looks. And that's all thanks to the frame meister and the RGB, uh, the RGB out. Now the, the real reason why I can't show you guys, yeah, it, it might you might not see it as direct um, if I showed you the RCA cables, but the real reason is that I don't even have RCA cables here, believe it or not. Um, when I brought my systems back, I knew that I wasn't going to be bringing back the regular RCA cables because I was going to buy the SCART cable here from Retro Console Accessories, and that's exactly what I did. So I actually have no means of showing you guys um, the footage, but just take a look at the footage here that you're seeing as I uh, as I ramble on, and it's uh, it should be pretty obvious. So yeah, I uh, I really highly recommend you guys go check out uh, what's his name Stefan Shook uh, for an RGB modded N64. Uh, it's in perfect condition. I didn't have to wash the thing. It does come with the regular uh, jump pack here. So if you're like me. You're going to want to um, bring yours back or go and buy one um, 
these are super, super simple. You just put it in there and pull up and take that bad boy out and then just simply replace it with this guy right here. It only goes in one direction. And, and voila. There we go. So now this uh, this game, uh, this game, this N64 is completely maxed out and ready to go kick some ass in games like Perfect Dark and what have you. So uh, that's it guys. Uh, that's basically how you get the absolute best video quality from a Nintendo 64 is you need it to be RGB modded and you absolutely have to have a SCART cable and a means of actually displaying the SCART cable and unfortunately if you're in North America that's really going to limit your options. You're pretty much going to have no choice but to either get an upscaler or you're going to have to get a CRT that has um, RGB in or SCART in. So that's it guys. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this by all means leave, uh, leave a comment, let me know. And as always thank you so much for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.